Hi, everyone, once again. Uh, thank you for coming so early. Um, today I'd like to talk... One, two, three. Today I'd like to talk to you about pixel art, its current trends, and its possible future. Uh, you may have noticed, noticed I have like 2.0 in the title. That's because this talk is a bit of a continuation of my previous talk uh, on pixel art trends, and now I want to uh, talk about their future a little bit more. So, first I would like to introduce myself. My name is Arvi. I am a 2D artist and UI designer. Uh, I've been in the industry for more than five years and had a chance to work for applications and services for AAA franchises like Dragon Age, Mass Effect and League of Legends. Uh, I'm currently working as a 2D artist and UI designer at Game Insight, crafting new and exciting mobile experiences. Um, before I f we start talking about pixel art, I would like to uh, define it. What is pixel art exactly? Uh, pixel art is a technique of a 2D digital painting on a edited on a pixel level and usually on a smaller resolution canvas. A lot of to take in, many like big words, but like what's the most important thing about pixel art is that it's edited deliberately uh, and has deliberate pixel placement. And I'll explain in a minute. So let's take Mona Lisa, for example. It's like the masterpiece of traditional art. But if we uh, digitize it, stretch it, distort it, make it wackier, we have this. Yeah. So is this a digital image? Yeah, it is. Uh, is it on a smaller canvas? It's small, pretty small, just blown up. Yeah, right? Does it have pixels? Yes, it does. But is it pixel art? Not really, yeah? Why? Because uh, there is no intention behind the pixel placement. Like, it's an automated process, the result of an automated process, and uh, there's no technique in it. It may be, you know, pleasant to look at for some people. Uh, it may achieve its design goal, but it's not really pixel art. This is an example of pixel art. Uh, take a look at the pixel patterns the pixel clusters, the work with the limited color palette. You see that it's all deliberate. You, have, you see the artist's intention in it. But pixel art is not a style, it's a technique. It can be of many different styles. Uh, take a look at the game Chasm, for example. It looks really painterly because of this use of color and brushes. Or you can go even higher in the resolution, uh, and this is a promotion of material for the game Bunker, um, you take a look at the clever use of color, shading, and, and pixel clusters. So pixel art can be many different things, and we can produce all sorts of images with it. Why many indie developers uh, choose to use pixel art in particular? One of the reasons is, of course, nostalgia. Um, seeing that the pop culture nostalgia works in you know, uh, 20 to 30 year cycles, it's no wonder that the full-blown pixel art trend started in late 2000s, early 2010s. The creatives, the developers in their 20s and 30s, they tend to want to reproduce the feeling of games they played uh, when they were kids. And the audiences respond to it. Also linked to that is the digital feeling of pixel art because pixel art was born in the computer era, in the console era, and we tend to associate pixel art with games, consoles, everything digital. And so this just plays into that. But what are the practical reasons for developers for choosing pixel art? It's uh, generally believed that uh, pixel art compared to many other 2D and 3D techniques is much easier to produce. Like uh, you can create a convincing and even iconic images in very small resolutions. Look at Mario over here. He's just 16 by 16 pixels, but everybody knows him. He has, he's full of character. He's really memorable, great. And this, it's believed that uh, pixel art is faster in development and cheaper in the development, which is only partially true. Because, uh, as you can see, the character over here, Venom from Marvel vs. Capcom, he is of a huge resolution. He has a huge amount of det detail put, put in him. Look at the uh, shading, look at the anatomy on this guy. The animations are awesome. 
it takes a lot of time to produce this image. There's always charm and low resolution, but uh, don't forget about the visual appeal and craftsmanship that goes into creating really beautiful images. So, as many things, pixel art is easy to pick up and use for young developers or unexperienced developers, but as many other things, it's hard to master. Uh, I'm going to list some examples over here. For example, the game Owl Owlboy was nine years in the making, closer to 10 years, and just look at the beautiful, beautiful uh, quality of the assets, the meticulous details that went to creating each and every piece of graphics. It was created by one guy, by the way. Or other example, uh, Iconoclasts was almost eight years in the making, and look at the colorful, full of character graphics over here. This Metroidvania style platformer oozes style from every sprite. But I'm not here to tell you that, oh no, you cannot do pixel art unless you do something like this. Yeah, it's, it's not about this. Um, especially with the short amount of time and limited resources, as many indie developers do. I think it's uh, all about how cleverly you use this technique. For example, Sword and Sorcery. It has really, really tiny assets, like created in low details, but it's presented on the huge canvas in the huge, huge amounts. Uh, but uh, the scene, for example, this one, this scene from the game, uses lighting and ambience and post effects cleverly to create really eerie atmosphere. And it's great. Also, uh, look at the minimal re resolution of Towerfall. Uh, the approach here is purely practical. For example, in this fast-paced, frantic arcade game, uh, it was important for every element to be distinct and readable. Look at the characters. They have black outlines that separate them from the background. The background itself is more pale and it's separated from the active platforms that you interact with. And so gameplay drives the art direction. That's why it looks like this. You can go even smaller. Um, environmental Station Alpha. Look at this bunch of pixels over here. This orange guy, this is our main character. He's eight pixels tall but he's full of character. Um, this super low resolution is an intentional creative choice that lets the developer create a huge uh, explorable world with uh, pretty limited resources. So all in all, I think it's better to approach the technique and use the technique smartly. But uh, and for every artist, it's vital to learn the basics and to master the basics, like learn perspective, learn uh, anatomy, color theory, shading, everything, to make your images more appealing and to uh, create very, you know, attractive, attractive art direction. And no matter how low in resolution you go. But pixel art in itself uh, may be a great starting point for learning something yourself and for practicing basics of, for example, animation. If you take the notion of extremes and the distinct keyframes key frames in an animated character, in the early console days, because of the memory limitations, developers had really not that much options for animating each character. For example, Mega Man here has only three frames of graphics and four frames in total for a walking cycle, and he's the main character. For everybody else, it was even less. That's why in these limitations, they had to opt to very strong poses. You can see that he's like full of intention, he has his hands up, he's full of character. If you see it compared, here's like a remake of the same animation, but with stretched out in 12 frames. This character of his, it stays because of these strong poses that were introduced in four frames. So you see like a little fluff added, his head is turning, he has a little bounce, but he's still full of character, he has this intentional walk. So it's very important to create the basis for your animation with strong poses and strong um, character, and then it just can expand upon it. Like, uh, for example, look at the the characters 
and their walks, how they define them. For example, the Darkwing Duck here, he is a stealthier guy. They have Batman and Samus have different, you know, styles of running. And Mario is just, you know, happily jogging over here. Uh, these are essentially the basics of any animation, and they are easy to iterate upon uh, within the limited canvas of a uh, pixel image. Then you can go and pick up, for example, Animator Survival Kit, which is a great series of uh, uh, lessons on how to be an animator. And if you're an artist and interested in that, go for it. And you can practice within pixel art to hone your skills. In the end, the use, the usefulness, and the results of uh, pixel art as a technique are up to the creators. Their willingness to learn, improve upon, experiment, and explore. And I would say that the use of pixel art mainly boils to two main rules or don'ts. Don't blur and don't mess up the scale. Like, you really shouldn't do this if you want to use pixel art on your game. Or if you're seeing this in someone else's game, this really, like, kind of bugs you, right? This is, this is not right. And in a moment, I'll show some of the examples what you could really do with pixel art. And in fact, let's yeah, show it here. As I mentioned, pixel art is of many different styles. And you can do you can do 16 bit, right? You can do really rich and uh, uh, in-depth images with it. You can go 8 bit, will work within limited frames and limited palettes and uh, really drive in the nostalgia factor, like games from 80s, late 80s, early 90s. There is novelty and beauty in uh, applying bump mapping, dynamic lights, physics, and particle systems to it. Like, this is a pixel art game, Megasphere. Uh, this is a pixel art game in its core, but with all these new technologies and all these uh, updated engine capabilities and modern things, we can really make the image stand out. And also, we can go just beyond merely pixel art. The upcoming game, The Last Night, is aiming to achieve the really next-gen look with the pixel art at its core. As you can see, it aims for 4K resolution, has 3D elements, depth of field effects, it has bloom, blur, everything. But underneath all of that is, uh, is a pixel art game. And I think it's really cool and really exciting uh, for pixel art as a trend to go in these new different directions. Because when you say pixel art, everybody thinks Mario, uh, but it's not true. Pixel art can be this, pixel art can be this, and you can go even 3D. In fact, merging with 3D and moving forward with it is a new rising trend within the indie community. Because as I've mentioned, Nostalgia is working on a 20 to 30 year scale, right? And so the age of pixel art nostalgia is slowly moving into the age of early 3D, like PlayStation 1 graphics, 3D accelerators, Quake 1, and you know, you name it. Yeah, this is uh, some of the examples of my work in this field, trying to merge 3D and 2D um, into single image. This is where we have this wave of independent developers that uh, try to create games influenced by early three er, early 90s horror games or mid 90s shooter games, like uh, for example, Dusk and Stray for are inspired by Quake and Unreal, and they can go wild in in many different directions. Uh, you can go psychological, you can go really artsy with it. We just use the style as a jumping off point to create new things and tell new stories for it. And yeah, there are great many artists that try to push pixel art, uh, the boundaries of pixel art and the evolution of pixel art uh, really expand upon it. And the community is great. Uh, we are living all over the internet in pixel joined and Twitter. Deviant art and the community is really welcoming, and a gr there are a great deal of tutorials and learning materials if you would like to dip uh, your toes into pixel art, or if you would like to, you know, 
come in, say hi, comment, and admire some of the great art things that there are on the internet. And so I think that this is going to be it. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. Drop me a line on Twitter at ArvidSB and check out new things from Game Insights soon. Thank you very much.